Hello, I'm Fred Schneider and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. With daylight savings time beginning Sunday, March 10th, the City's Fire Department reminds residents to change the batteries in their smoke detectors when they change their clocks. Residents who do not own a smoke detector and live in a single-family residence may obtain one for free by visiting their local fire station and filling out a form. To learn more, visit kcmo.org fire. City Manager Troy Schulte has appointed Megan Fuller Fannensteel as the Administrator of the Municipal Court. Fannensteel previously served as the first Assistant City Prosecutor in the City Prosecutor's Office. Fannin Steele is a member of the Missouri Supreme Court's Region 4 Disciplinary Committee and the Association for Women Lawyers. She was also named an up-and-coming lawyer in 2012 by Missouri Lawyers Weekly. As springtime approaches, the city encourages residents to review what to do and where to go in the event of tornadoes or other severe weather. To help get started, the City's Office of Emergency Management provides many preparedness resources online at kcmo.org OEM. Now let's check in with some of our City Departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities bringing you more news of upcoming shows, conferences, and conventions taking place at your city facilities. 500 of the world's newest, most stylish vehicles will be on display at the Greater Kansas City Auto Show March 6th through the 10th at Bartle Hall. The show's featured cars, trucks, crossovers, SUVs, and minivans will cover more than eight football fields. For more information, visit Kansas City Auto Show Dot com. Bartle Hall will also serve as a location for the Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show, March 22nd through the 24th. Residents interested in sprucing up their home or yard this spring are guaranteed to find many clever decorating, design, and remodeling ideas at this Kansas City tradition. In addition, attendees will also enjoy the entertainment stage, children's art activities, how-to demonstrations, and much more. Visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800 for more information. The 2013 MIAA Basketball Tournament takes place March 7th through March 10th at the Municipal Auditorium. And the NAIA Division I Men's 2013 National Basketball Championship will take place March 13th through March 19th, also at Municipal Auditorium. To purchase tickets, visit Ticketmaster.com or go to the Municipal Auditorium box office. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit KCConvention.com and click on the Events Calendar or call 816-513-5000. Hi, this is Heidi Downer with Parks and Recreation. And today we are going to meet our new Deputy Director, Terry Reinhardt, who actually has some history with our department. Well, I started with Parks and Recreation um, back when I was a kid in high school as a summer worker here in Kansas City and had the opportunity to work on uh, the mowing crew, as it was called back in the day, um, for six years while I was in high school and college and then worked here 15 years full time. Um, at that point, I had an opportunity for promotion in Ann Arbor, Michigan and then um, another opportunity took me for promotion down to the city of Fort Lauderdale where I've spent the last eight years. What did you do in Fort Lauderdale? I was the deputy director in Fort Lauderdale, um, primarily in charge of maintenance and uh, beach maintenance. Uh, so uh, I got here, I think, the first the day before it snowed, about 12 more inches. So um, still had the maintenance hat on, but it just a different, different obstacle. <laughs> well, that yeah. Tell us a little bit about the differences between um, Parks and Recreation in 
Florida versus Missouri? Yeah, I mean, the mission's still the same. You're still trying to provide the best service um, at the best price so that the patrons and our citizens can enjoy um, what we have in our great parks. But uh, the details are a little different. Um, we had to struggle with sea turtle regulations and beach regulations and the weather being sunny and hot all the time. Um, but, you know, the the whole purpose of Parks and Recreation, I think, and the benefits of Parks and Recreation, um, they span across across the continent. So, as far as working here, I have some great experiences. Uh, you know, there's always a big rush to get things open. I remember um, it rained about six inches the day before we opened the Anita Gorman Fountain up north, and uh, we had to shovel quite a bit of mud and lay quite a bit of sod to make sure the opening went out on time. So. Reasphalting the stairs to the Swope Memorial was a challenging job. Um, constructing Loose Lake was a nice, fun job that I had the opportunity to work on. You know, I have great memories here, and, and you know, I loved my job in Fort Lauderdale, but my heart just kept tugging back to Kansas City, and you know, I'm really glad to be back here. And I take this job seriously. I know what an honor it is, and uh, what a tradition it is. And you know, in a department that's 120 years old and only had seven directors. You know, there's, it's steeped in tradition and in good tradition and certainly the reputation across the country is one of the premier systems. So, um, you know, it's a challenge. I, I take it as that and I also understand that it's a big honor to be in this position. So, thankful to be back here in Kansas City. For more information about Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation, visit our website at kcmo.org slash parks. Last year, Kansas City had over 4,000 auto break-ins, and they typically represent 25% of crimes reported. But there's a simple thing you can do to lower the risk of becoming a victim. Put your junk in your trunk. Phones, laptops, GPS units, iPads, anything of value that can be seen lying in your car is an invitation for a break-in. Most likely, a thief won't break into a vehicle unless there's something to steal. Forgetting to place your items out of sight could cost you, as Katrin Hoyser, owner of a fair restaurant, can attest. I left a bag that was of no value. It was my kid's bag with books in it in the back seat. Didn't think about putting it away, and somebody felt like they needed to break the glass and take it. We addressed it. Susan Ahrens from the Community Association really addressed it with the uh, campaign, Put Your Junk in the Trunk and we haven't had any problems in the last months. There's been great cooperation with the community, the police has been wonderful, they, there's been an increased police activity, they patrol the lots, the community in general has made an immense difference. We haven't had any problems in quite some time now. There is a simple solution to it, put your junk in the trunk. The merchants and residents of the Crossroads District have initiated displaying put your junk in the trunk posters in parking lots and shops as a gentle reminder to lock your valuables out of sight. The program has been adopted from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where it has made a significant impact. Renee Allen, Crime Prevention Specialist of the Minneapolis PD reports, since the program's inception, they have seen a huge reduction in theft from autos. Efforts are underway to make it a citywide campaign. If you would like a junk in the trunk poster, contact the Crossroads Community Association for price and sizes. So I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis, reminding you to put your junk in the trunk. Looking ahead, the city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 1st for residents in the city's central zone. On their regularly designated trash pickup day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. Collection for residents in the south zone will be the week of April 8th and pickup for residents in the North Zone will be the week of April 15th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org slash trash. Residents may also dispose of woody debris at the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers, located at 1815 North Shoto Traffic Way, 10301 Raytown Road, and 11660 North Main Street. Please note, a federal and state quarantine has been placed on Clay and Platte counties because of the emerald ash borer pest. 
As a result, residents of Clay and Platte counties may only use the Leaf and Brush drop-off center located on North Main Street. For more information, please visit kcmo.org slash trash and click on the Leaf and Brush link. The city will participate in Earth Hour and encourages residents and businesses to join in by turning off all non-essential lights on Saturday, March 23rd from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. To learn more, visit earthhour.org. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.